Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is the Photoshop Elements Dispersion Effect. But we'll take it a little bit further and add some color in here as well, a real exciting image. Okay, if you enjoy this video, make sure that you click on the like button and also, of course, subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about Photoshop Elements, take a look at my complete training courses, which are linked in the description and, of course, at the end of this video. All right, let's get to it. The basic idea behind the Photoshop Elements Dispersion is that the image is kind of breaking up and getting smeared out into all kinds of other interesting shapes and so forth. Let's just hide our colors in here. So there's a basic dispersion happening. Now there are lots of ways of doing this. This is really wide open on what the effect looks like. You can use all kinds of different brushes to do this. I'll be sticking with basic easy to get to brushes, but if you want to find some splatter brushes online and then add those brushes into your Photoshop Elements program, that's another great way to really advance this look. But we'll just do this straightforward. So in any case, this is going to be our final or something like this. It never comes out exactly the same each time, so we'll see how close we can get. But there we go. Okay, I'm just going to close that down and save it. There we go. Let's get rid of that. So here's the original picture, and let's zoom in. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to make a careful selection around the figure and then separate the figure out onto its own layer. Now the tool I use for this is the polygonal lasso tool, and that's right over here, and start off with a new selection. I normally have my feathering set at one pixel, which just makes it a little bit smoother on the edge. And then simply begin to make a careful selection around the whole image. I'm going to just do just the hand here, and I'll show you just a couple of things on this, on using this tool. You simply click, and then find your next point and click. So it's going to create a line between the points that you're clicking. Take your time with this tool. Don't go too fast, or it's going to do some really just really kind of strange. I'll show you that in just a second. Just kind of go up around the thumb here. So let's say I'm getting a little bit impatient on this and I come part way down the thumb and I click too fast. That's what happens. If you double click instead of single click, it collapses the selection down. And you have to start over again. So you don't want to want to be doing that. Let's just deselect that. So take your time when you're using this particular tool. So let's make this you know, a little breathe between each one of your clicks and you'll be fine. You can zoom in a long ways and then if you need to move things around, if you get to the edge of your picture for instance, you need to move it around because you're zoomed in too close, just hold the space bar down. You can then move your image around, look with the space bar and then continue making your selection just like that. It's pretty that easy to do. I'm just going to go ahead and get around the hand here and then I'll show you something else on this. I'm just going to kind of go fast here so we can get on with our discussion, come back to our beginning point. So let's say you select part of this. You can do that and then go back and add to your selection or subtract from your selection. Let's say I wanted to come in here and bring in the arm into my selection. Simply click on the add down here and then start inside of your existing selection and then go up around and select your new bit of the figure here. I'm just going to cut it off right here for now. And come around and then finish up back inside of your old selection and back to the beginning again. And that adds that part to your selection. Let's say you have a situation like this where you want to get rid of something which you don't want to have selected but it's inside of your selection. Just go over here to this. This is the subtract option. Again, start inside your selection and then just come along the edge in here. Again, you know, take your time on all this stuff. Just don't be impatient with this. Just take your time and come around and, and choose the part that you want to get rid of in here. And I'm just going to take it out here Then go outside of the part you want to get rid of. Back to your beginning 
it then removes that part from your selection. So you can really fine tune your selection using these three options. Start with the new, add more if you need to add more, subtract if you need to clean up or subtract your selection. Okay, it's really that easy. Then just take your time and go around the whole figure. Let me just delete that. Now I've already made the selection for this particular figure in here, and then I saved that one so you don't have to watch me spend 10 minutes making a selection. So there's my selection. Answer is made just as I just showed you, just taking my time going around the figure very carefully, going back and making adjustments if needed until I had the whole figure selected. Okay, so that's step one. Make your selection around your figure. Now for this really to work out well, it helps if the image that you have, the figure has some motion to it. This has a lot of motion obviously, but you know, having motion makes this a more interesting, more exciting picture. Okay, now we have this. Let's go up here to Layer and New via Copy. That gives you a new layer here, and what it does is it copies out what's in the selection and puts it on a transparent background. That's exactly what you want. Now that we have that, let's take this, drag it up here to a new layer right there, and let's rename these. The top one is going to be our figure, and the bottom one is going to be our dispersion. We're actually going to have two dispersion layers. We'll get the first one made first. Now we need to distort the figure and kind of stretch it out so it comes way out here, kind of like that, just way outside. And we'll then be showing parts of that and hiding parts of the original using layer masks and brushes. Now the best way for this dispersion layer to stretch your figure out is to use the liquify tool. I've tried different tools and the liquify really does the best job for it because it keeps a lot of the detail in your image which really helps out. So let's just move this up here a little bit, go up to filter and come down to distort and liquify right there. Now I'm currently using Photoshop Elements 15. Some earlier versions of Photoshop Elements had to liquify elsewhere in, in, the, in the list, but right now it's under distort and liquify right here. And there's our liquify filter. Lots of tools over here. Only one you need to worry about is the top one, that's the warp tool. I have mine set right now at 107. You know, about 100 is fine. Pressure at 50 is fine. And then it's come into the middle of the image and begin pulling it out. And just go clear around the whole image. And we'll do this a few times. And we just want to stretch the image out and make it a lot fatter than it was to begin with. Again, go inside the image and pull it out. You know, I'll go to opposite side you'll kind of just move it. You want to actually stretch it out like it's a piece of putty and you're just kind of pulling it out. Almost like finger painting so that we're not really smearing it, we're just kind of stretching it. And that will give us the best effect in here. And again, we'll want you know a couple of passes on this, two or three passes to get a real nice stretch. Don't worry about what it looks like, we just want to get the size increased here and kind of worked a little bit just to help smear things around, spread things around. Just kind of work your way around. Once you've gone clear around once, then let's go around a second time. And same thing, just going just inside and pulling it out. Looks really kind of weird, but that's fine. Now, I like the kind of smeary stuff you get in there. That really will help out the final image. Adds a lot to it, especially on the, the technique I'm using. We'll be doing some painting and also some splattering effects. And so having this a bit smeary helps with the painting part of it. Gives kind of a brush strokey look, which is interesting. Okay, so there's our second pass on this. It doesn't need to be as long as the first pass. It's easier. As you get larger it goes much faster. Okay, let's just go around one more time here and really stretch this figure out as much as we can. You can see how it still retains a lot of detail. You really kind of see that that's still a shoe there. There's still some stuff. There's still kind of a sock. There's still a leg. We can still see where the arm is. 
And that's what this liquify tool does for us. It keeps a lot of the image still relatively intact. And that's what really gives you that dispersion effect like it's actually, you know, the image is actually being dispersed. Instead of just colors being smeared out, it's actually the image is being dispersed out. Okay, there we go. Just kind of like that. Just a big smear. Choose OK. There it is. Now you can see here, here is the image on top and there's a smear behind. I'm going to just bring the opacity down on the, on the background smear so you can kind of see that. So there's the top image and there's the background smear behind it. Okay, let's hide our top in, image for a second. Let's take this dispersion layer now, drag this up to the new layer button, bring it down underneath so it's in behind, and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. There we go. And then I'm going to grab this. I'm just going to stretch this out a bit like that so this background one is larger than the one that we just did. Okay. There's the background. There's the foreground. So there's the foreground one. There's the background one. And we're now all set. So now we need our layer masks on all of these layers. Click on your top layer. Hit the layer mask button. Dispersion layer, layer mask, dispersion copy, layer mask. So now go down to our paint colors. Make sure that black is in your foreground. Click on the paint bucket and we're on the layer mask. Notice that light blue outline. Layer mask for our bottom dispersion. Just click out here someplace that fills that with black. Let's go to our next dispersion layer right here. Click on the layer mask side and fill it with black as well. So we have two black and the top one is white. Okay, now we're ready to begin doing the actual dispersion. This is where the creativity comes in. Now the brush I'm using, go here to the brush tool, and I'm using one up here. It's under default brushes, and it's down quite a ways in the list of default brushes. I'm just going to scroll down here until we get down here. There we go. These are kind of splattery things right in here. That one right there says 39. Double click on that to set that one. And it's kind of small here, so I'm going to pull this up to about 250 or so. Just like that. There's a pretty good size. You can kind of see it right there. I'm going to put a white layer in here above the background. Make this real easy to see. Let's just do a new layer right there. And paint bucket fill that with white. There we go. And back to our brush. So now I can really see that. Okay, with the white, our white layer up here, we want to cut parts out of the figure. And we'll be staying here just on the legs. I'm going to leave the arms alone, the head alone. We're doing just the legs. So you want to do black onto the white layer. So we have black right down there. We're all set. And just come in here and just tap this a few times. You're going to have to tap. It comes in kind of, kind of thin. So tap it a few times in a few spots. We can always come back and adjust this later. So we're just like that, just tapping it a few places. And it's just cutting holes. I'll put one there on his head. It's just cutting holes in here into the legs. I'm going to do a little more right in there. You can also pull like this if you want to make it a little bit, a little bit stronger, kind of a pulling effect. Okay, there we are. Now, come down to the next layer. It's black, so I want to add white to this. So let's change our paint color to white. And now we can come in here and click further out. And you can see what it does is it shows some of that larger shape in behind. And at this point, we're kind of at where you'll see a lot of the dispersion techniques, other examples. That's about as far as they take it. We're going to take it a little bit further than this. We do a couple of things. First, I'm going to do a little bit of smearing in here. Just some smearing stuff like that. Just a little, little paint smear. There we go. Let's now come down to our next layer here. And on this one, I'm going to be using a smaller brush. I'll bring the brush down to, I'll just type this in, 150. And I'm going to put in just a few little spots further out in here. Just little accent spots, really. There we are. Now on this layer, let's bring the opacity down on this down to 37%. So there it is. That's just a little 
lightness outside there. There we go. On our main dispersion layer, we have some splattering happening here, and we also have some paint pull kind of effects in there. Let's now come in and put in some fancy colors on this. Now for our colors, we're going to be using layers. So come here to layer and come down to adjustment layer. And the one you want is the gradient map. This actually maps a gradient onto the contents of your layer. Notice right now we're on our top dispersion layer. Click on use previous layer to create clipping mask. Choose OK. And there's put this gray onto that layer. I want to change this. Click on, on the gradient and then change this over here to this one. It's the orange, yellow, orange, and choose OK. And there's a kind of fancy gradient in there. Now let's close that one down. Now come down to the bottom dispersion layer. Same trick. Layer, adjustment layer, gradient map. Again, click the use previous layer, choose OK. Click on the gradient and now choose this one here. It's blue to yellow to blue. Choose OK. This kind of gives kind of that, that bluish effect back in there. Close that down. OK, there we go. There's our basic kind of a painty effect. Now I want to see a little bit more of the legs in here. So I'm bring back some of that legs. And that's up here on the top figure layer. If I want to show more, I want to have white. So I'm going to change this back to my standard brush. Let's just find a nice standard size brush, maybe a 45, yeah, a little large. Let me try. 200 is too much. 100 looks pretty good. So 100 soft edge brush. There we are. And we want white. That's correct. And let's come back in. Just kind of tap in here. And you can bring back in a little bit of the leg. Maybe to show some, some of the shoes in there. There we go. So given this kind of this interesting paint smear effect happening in here all done with this dispersion technique so if you don't want to have the paint colors just remove those layers there's your standard dispersion technique again we took it a bit further with kind of smearing stuff in here with our smear effect but there it is that's the dispersion effect now, as you can see here there's a lot of variations here a lot of variables you can have a lot of fun with this it's going to look different every single time you do it so it's a lot of fun to play with. Again, to make this really work out well, you want to have an image that has a lot of action and motion to it. But there you go. That is the Photoshop Elements Dispersion Effect. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.